story about the president-elect having to stay in a hotel rather than Blair House may be exactly that, a story to cover what turns out to be an insult from the outgoing commander-in-chief to his successor. That's next, but first time countdown's number two story. Tonight's worst persons in the world. The broads tonight to Tom McCluskey, vice president of James Dobson's lobbying outfit Family Research Council, protesting the nomination of Thomas Pirelli by the president-elect to become the number three man at the Justice Department. Why? Because Pirelli was one of the lawyers who represented Michael Schiavo as he tried to end the gothic nightmare induced by the far right as he struggled to have a court order enforced to remove the feeding tube from his wife Terry, whose brain functions had ceased. The careers of Senate Majority Leader Bill Frist and his House counterpart Tom DeLay crashed in large part because they took this private tragedy into Congress and exploited it politically even as 70% of this country told them to stop their cynical manipulation of this beleaguered family. Now these Dobsonian theocrats are protesting an appointment at the Justice Department because the man was on the morally and legally correct side of the debate. The runner-up tonight, comedian Rush Limbaugh. Look, we're all used to the hypocrisy, like how he attacked anybody who dared to suggest that George Bush's election might have been fraudulent, but now says, we did not elect Al Franken. He stole the race. They're stealing the race up there blind in front of everybody's nose. They're counting absentee ballots. But the bald face lying about sourcing in this is something new and special. Comedian added, the Wall Street Journal has a story on this. They're counting votes twice. The Wall Street Journal does not have a story on this. Its rabid, fire-breathing, lunatic fringe editorial page wrote a screed about it. Limbaugh is not the only commentator on radio or TV who has deliberately misrepresented a partisan Wall Street Journal editorial as a, quote, news story. But he is the foremost of them. But our winner... Governor Sarah Palin, the father of her grandson, Levi Johnston, has now quit his job in the oil fields of Alaska's North Slope after a newspaper columnist pointed out that to get the electrical apprenticeship Johnston had, applicants were supposed to have had a high school diploma. Levi Johnston, of course, dropped out. The columnist wondered if the governor might have used her influence to get the rules bent for her supposed future son-in-law, or maybe it was her husband who works on that same oil field. They deny it, which I'm willing to believe even though Levi Johnson's response to this scandal was to quit his job, which is an indicator of innocence. Sure it is. I'm believing this because it doesn't matter, because the governor is the bottomless pit of political scandals, the all-you-can-eat buffet of political scandals, the endless wedge of Velveeta of political scandals. Governor Sarah Palin, today's worst, and by worst I mean the gift that keeps on giving, and I'd be lost without her person in the world!